Hi everyone. So it's been a few weeks since the Home System Volume 3 was released. And as of today, uh, what is it, March 24th, uh, DxO Photolab 8 and PureRAW 4 still do not support the OM3 RAW files. So what I'm going to do today is show you how you can edit the RAW files or process using DxO PureRAW 4, uh, your OM3 RAW files. Uh, this is just a temporary fix until it's officially supported. Uh, but I haven't had any problems using this method. And I've been editing my raw files just like I would as if it was natively supported anyway. So basically what we're doing, just a quick overview, is uh, we're going to be taking the EXIF data, and that's basically the information about the image that's embedded into the raw file that tells the software like PhotoLab 8, Lightroom, PureRAW, what camera was used. And we're going to change that camera from OM3 to OM1 Mark II. Now you're going to need to install two different pieces of software, uh, so I'm going to walk you through that, but I'm going to show you where you can download them from, and uh, I'll have all the links down below in the description, but uh, I'm going to walk you through, just in case those links get broken later on, this is how you can find it in uh, Google uh, Search or whatever search engine you use. So I'm just going to type in EXIF Tool GUI, EXIF Tool GUI, like that. And then I'm going to click on this one, EXIF Tool by... Uh, Phil Harvey. And then right here, there's a little introduction. This explains uh, if you have foreign characters and stuff. And if you run into problems, you may want to come back and read all of this. But I'm just going to go get right into it. Uh, what we want to do here is first we need to install EXIF Tool. Uh, and it says you only need to download this from here. So we're going to click on this link. And then here we have the uh, Windows version. I have Windows. If you have Mac, uh, I think the installation process is very similar, but I'm not familiar with Mac, so I'm going to show you how to do this in Windows. So I'm going to download the 64-bit version from here like this. And I'm going to put this into my Downloads folder and click Save. And it's a very, very small file. And then from here, I will just uh, open this up. And we're going to extract it. And they recommend that you extract the EXIF tool into your Windows directory. So we're going to browse for that. And we'll go to C. Go down here to Windows. And do Select Folder. And then we'll just do Extract. And Continue for Administrator Permissions. We'll wait for that. Okay, now let's just scroll down and you'll see that we've created this new folder here. We'll open that up. Okay, next the instructions tell us we need to rename this particular file. So I'm just going to hit the F2 key to rename this. And all I have to do is delete this parentheses K here, like this. And that's it. And we'll continue. And say yes. Okay, and we're all done there. Now let's go back to our browser and click back. Now we've installed the EXIF tool. Now we want to install the EXIF tool GUI. And it says you can download the EXIF tool GUI from here. So we're going to click on this. And then just reading through this, it tells us that it's no longer supported, but there's an updated version right here. So we're going to click on this. And then, this, this now we can get the latest version. And you can see we're up to version 6.3.8 as of March 14th. So this is very, very new. Uh, and then we want to click on this one and say Download Release. All right, and then on this page, we're just going to scroll down. And we're going to select this one, EXIF Tool GUI Install. Click on that, save it to our Downloads folder. And now that that's done, we'll just go ahead and click on it to run it. We'll click more info here. Then I'll scroll over and say click run anyway. And then click yes. And I'm going to accept the agreement here and click next. Click next. And I'm just going to leave this uh, set to manual because we already installed the EXIF tool. 
uh, the latest version. Uh, so I'd rather do it directly rather than going through the software here because maybe this wasn't updated. So that's why I'm doing it this way. We'll click next here and we'll click install. Okay, and then we'll click next. And here's some links where you can get it, but we already did that. All right, now we go to our desktop. We now have an XF GUI tool shortcut. So we'll double click on that. And you may get this error here. If that's the case, uh, it says you can resolve this by uh, installing XF tool in this directory. But uh, let's just click no here. And what we're going to do instead is we're going to go into program preferences and then go over here to other and we have this specified click on specify and then just select this and then we're going to go into c scroll down here to windows and then scroll down here to exif uh, tool 3.25-64 and just click ok and then click save and it says check geocode requirements api key a free account just say ignore okay all right now at this point i'm not sure exactly if your screen is going to look exactly the same as mine because i've been using this a while and i may have rearranged something but let me walk you through the panels so over here we just have our folder directory so what you want to do is over here you want to navigate to wherever the om3 image files are that you save to your computer so i save you know all my images here in this directory i'm going to select the last one that i did here and over here, you'll get the file list. And this is where you want to sort uh, all your raw images. So the raw images for the OM3 are .orf. So I'm just going to sort by item type. And then I'm going to scroll down until I see the first one right here. So I'll select that one. Now over here, I have the workspace uh, highlighted here. Now this may look different this may be empty or it may have all this some default uh, uh tags here but what i'm looking for over here is the model number so you can see here it says om3 this is the exit data if you don't see this line item here so if, say for example if i right click this and remove it what i can do is go to the exit data here and then look for it down here and then right click on it and say add tag to workspace. Now I can go back to the workspace and you can see it was added down here. And what I want to do is change this OM3 to say OM1 Mark 2. And you do that in this little box down here. So I'm just going to select that, type in OM1 Mark 2, no spaces. So OM1, capital M, A R K and then uh, two capital I's. And then I'm going to hit enter. After I've done that, I'm just going to click save. All right, so you can see we changed file name uh, 300 411 to the OM1 Mark II. And if we look at number 419, you can see this is still the OM1 Mark III as well as all the ones down here. So let's go back to Photolab. I've navigated back to the same directory I was using the Axif tool. You can see here's the first file number 30411. If I double click on that to edit it, you can see the file opens up just fine. And uh, I can apply, you know, my presets, which have the uh, deep prime adjustment. And I can do any editing I want, just like it was any other raw file. And if we look at the EXIF data over here, you can see that DXO Photolab now thinks that this is the OM1 Mark II. And if you're using, say, Lightroom and DxO Pure Raw, let's go over to uh, Lightroom. All right, so I've navigated to the same folder, and uh, this is the first file, and I can now process this using Pure Raw. So I just do File, plug in Extras, go over here, process instantly with Pure Raw 4. It should come up. Okay, let me click Edit here and say Apply, and then Process. You can see that I now have my DNG file. But if I go back to that folder 
and click on OM3. Let's click one of the OM3 files, and I do File, Plugin Extras, Process Instantly. Many of you have probably seen this. It could not uh, process this image because it's not supported. Now you can bulk change all of these files at once uh, very easily in Exif Tool. So let's go back and do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the next file and then scroll all the way down until I get to the very last one right here. And then I'm going to shift and click so that it highlights all of those uh, four or 500 files. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to go in here. Just make sure this says OM1, Mark 2. Hit Enter. And then click Save. Now, before I click save, I want you to keep your eye up over here. Right now, it says one image file updated because we just did one. But if I click save now, you're going to see it counting down until it finishes doing all 400 and some files. So we'll wait for that. All right, now it says 501 image files updated. So let's go back into DxO Photo Lab and click on the photo library. And now you can see I can select any of these files. And then over here in the exit panel, you see it says OM1 Mark II. So I can now edit any of these files. So if I want to edit this one, for example, I just do apply preset. Let's double click on it. And we're back to doing whatever we want to do, just like it was a natively supported already. And if I go back in the Lightroom and execute the Pure Raw 4 plugin, it's going to work on all 500 of those files. Now, I did make a mistake the first time I tried to use this EXIF tool is, um, I put in OM1 and not OM1 Mark II. And the problem I ran into was with my high-res shot files because the OM1 Mark II and the OM3 uh, do 14-bit high-res shot files. And when I put in OM1 originally, um, my high-res shot files were coming in too bright and overexposed and it wasn't editing properly. Uh, so be sure to use OM1 Mark II if you're going to be updating or trying this for OM3s. And hopefully soon DxO will support the OM3 natively, but this, this will be a short-term fix until then. And Exif Tool can be used for a lot of other things, um, which I'm not going to get into, but I'll just mention one of the most common things I use it for is to change the lens name and f-stop uh, for when I'm adapting manual lenses to my camera, uh, particularly for cameras that don't support naming the manual lens like the OM3 does and the OM1 and OM1 Mark II, etc. Uh, that's very common use. It can also do geotagging and a bunch of other stuff, but I never use those things. So I hope you found this video helpful. If so, consider buying me a coffee or making a donation on links below. They're greatly appreciated. That's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.